It's me, Undead Viking. I'm here to talk to you about a game called Ether Wars. This is a game that uh, uh, by two Spanish yeomen who uh, uh, told me about the game quite a while ago, and I just was kind of entranced with the idea of it. Uh, it's a game of um, kind of worker placement, but it's 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 weird. It's, it's how do I explain it? It's kind of like if you took part of Stone Age and combined it a little bit uh, with Cosmic Encounter. And then kind of threw in a little bit of uh, a Nexus Ops, <laughs> and you jammed all those together. Uh, you'd kind of have a, a, a decent idea of, of what the game is, and 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 that isn't exactly 100% uh, accurate. But that is is you know that's what I felt like when I when I played the game, and I enjoyed it a great deal. Um, basically, what it is is that each player. Uh, it plays a different race that has come to this this planet of Etheria, and you're racing to extract this uh, ether, the, the this this mythical power base. Um, and then, depending on the number of players, the person who wins the game uh, is the first person to gather a certain amount of that. So, like with with two players, it's like you know I think it's nine, and with like four players, it's like five. You know, because with more players, obviously you're fighting over it. Um, but uh, and then first person to gather all that uh, immediately wins the game. It's one of those uh, fun little cool little games that doesn't have a set number of turns. It's just going to continue until one person inevitably wins. And and uh, because of the frenetic and uh, constant combative pace of the game, it actually happens uh, pretty quickly. So uh, I'm going to show you how to play the game like I always do. And then we're going to come back here and I'm going to tell you exactly uh, what I think of Ether Wars. All right, cool. Awesome. Okay, this is Ether Wars, and this is where you're going to be placing your units uh, to do certain actions. Mostly what you'll be doing is you'll be either extracting resources from the planet, or you'll be doing battle uh, with other players' units as well. Uh, units are represented uh, by dice, and then you'll roll those dice to see how effective they are after you've placed them on the board. Uh, the game uh, begins by each player getting a race. You have humans, you have rippers, uh, you have drakens, and you have the Vi. <laughs> I was like, like, Steve Vi? But, um, anyway, so each, and each one of these races has special abilities. Um, sometimes there are special abilities on, on their, on the, uh, the, the player board, which can only be used if you have a charge token. You get one to start with the game, but also, um, whenever your hero die, which is a slightly more powerful die than, say, a, a normal unit die, notice the difference, um, the hero dice have their little charge token there, so you can see there on the bottom. Maybe you can't see that. There's also a large one like that. Uh, when you roll the charge token, you get a, another one of these uh, things here. And then when you have those, then you can enact the special power that the uh, that, 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 your, that your race has. Uh, for example, um, the humans, uh, when they are in a combat, they can spend one of these charge tokens to remove the uh, best rolled uh, uh, opponent that they're fighting. So, like, you rolled really well on a die, they can use that, and you have to remove that from the combat. Um, so they just have ways you can break the rules. And then each uh, race uh, gets these four cards that are going to be um, these special powers that they have. So, like, here's... Um, I apologize. Uh, one side is, is Spanish, one side is, is uh, English. So, like, Valor. Uh, unit, units are powered up always, and that they are not... Um, Always, when they're not accompanied, accompanied by your hero in the zone they represent. Now, that you might be saying, what does powered mean? Well, on these dice, uh, you will have these circles that have are, are not filled, and circles that are filled. If you are powered, those circles are considered to be filled, and they will count. Normally, this would not be anything. This would be zero, but that would be one, if that's the case. And I think there's one that has two, but one, but then it would be two if they're empowered. So, uh, like a certain ability. And then... Um, uh, during the placement phase, you can make one placement to one zone uh, when you already have placed troops there. Uh, maximum three units and the hero. Uh, so normally, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, normally when you're placing your units on there, once you've placed dice in any in a, uh, a spot, 
you uh, can't place them there. But that, of course, then breaks the rules. And each one of the races has four of these cards that they get to break the rules. You don't use these up. You just get to pick one at the beginning of your turn. You'll show it so everybody knows it's your special powers for that particular turn. And then you can use that. And you can use it again next turn if you want to, if it worked really well for you. And you can use the same one the entire game. But you do have some flexibility. And I like the fact that all those are different for each one of the races. It really adds a lot to the game. And it makes each race kind of fight in a different way. Uh, you'll also get uh, three, to begin with, you'll get three of these, um, oh, grabbed one too many, uh, three of these ether cards, and you can get more later on in the game. You can buy them in the market, which is over there. Uh, these, just another way you can break the rules slightly. So, um, uh, play this card before the resolution phase, move two units to your silo defense, choose two enemy units, and move them to their silo defense. Uh, normally, if your silo is being attacked, maybe uh, you hadn't put anything there, but then somebody's attacking your silo, trying to take your resources. You could play this card and then and then move them. Uh, today's event does not affect your actions. Events are something that happens each turn. I'll show that to you in a second. Or, like, your units do not have a maintenance cost this turn. Um, at the very end of your turn, you have to pay maintenance to keep your people alive, basically. So, uh, so that's just another way, once again, that you can break the rules. You'll have these cards, and they can be uh, pretty powerful, actually. So at the beginning of each turn, uh, you will turn over an event, and it'll just have some special thing that happens. So today, um, all the players receive two coltons. If there aren't enough coltons available, uh, then no one receives any. So that's a pretty good card. Um, you, you know, and these aren't all good. Um, there's some that are bad, too. Uh, like... Uh, uh, let me see here. Do, do, do. Um, all the players must discard uh, one of their ethereal favor cards, which are those cards I just showed you earlier. Um, uh, only the hero uh, may purchase at the market, so you have to use a hero in that, that thing. Um, oh, each, for each two plasmas extracted, the player receives one more. And so th they can be good or bad. And, you know, so if it's something that you don't want to uh, have affect you in the turn, like one of those, like that card that, that I had would, would come in handy as far as not having that event happen. But here, or, or like um, each player receives a uh, free Ethereal's favorite card. So there's all kinds of stuff like that. There's also ones that like make it so um, like heroes can't use their special abilities or things like that. So it adds, and that's one of those cool things, a nice big deck of, of those uh, event cards. I like having that. You're probably not going to get through all that deck when you play it. And so um, each time you play the game, it's going to be slightly different. It's going to kind of tell a different story as you play as well. So after you do the event, um, I'm, I'm not in the first turn, because the very beginning you get five of your normal dice, or five of your normal uh, units, and one uh, a hero. And then you'll get to place that. But Normally, after the first turn, you will get uh, one free reinforcement, uh, like one free uh, new die, if you will, and you will get two uh, of these uh, uh, bios, um, the, the proteins or whatever that you use to uh, feed your people and keep them alive. Uh, you start with 20 of those, and along with those of that hero and the five units, so um, you don't have to, uh, you know, you know, like worry about it that much the first turn because you're going to have some. So after, if that's done, uh, then uh, if you are able to hire mercenaries, if you have the right resources, that's able to hire these mercenaries over here, and that's what these dice are over here. You can hire them, and then like, um, but they're not like a standard thing. Like sometimes they'll they'll ask for a certain, uh, like. Uh, like they'll ask for a crystal or they'll ask for plasma and, and things like that. So usually at the very beginning of the game, you can't really afford to hire them, but they're very powerful and they don't actually, like they aren't just for fighting. I mean, there's like an assassin mercenary that like will just go and um, slay other other people's uh, units. But there's one that's just an extractor. He's like a drone, you know, and he'll go and he'll, he'll gather extra uh, resources for you. And so they do have a varied ability. So that's kind of a neat thing that like you can hire a mercenary for that one turn uh, to really help you out. But after you get done with the hiring mercenaries, at that point, you're able to go ahead and place your units. And placing units just is just as easy as you might think. If you played a worker placement game, you know exactly how to do this. Each person will take it take a moment and they'll say, okay, I'm gonna put two guys over here in the Coltons. And then, you know, maybe uh, the rippers go, I want plasma, and then here we have two over there. And uh, maybe the humans decide, well, you know, I'm going to go for the ether here in the middle. You know, I'm just going to go go for broken. I'm going to put three in there. Now, at this point, right now, 
no fights are going to happen because there isn't more than one race in the middle uh, going after the ether, and there isn't a hero on board. The moment you put a hero on board, like so, that's going to you're, that hero is establishing dominance in that area, and they are going to be fighting. And uh, you know, so in this case, these two will be fighting now. There is a limit to the number of different type of players that can be involved. In these resource areas here, there can be two players in those that area. Over here, in the, in the 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 like where you get the proteins, everybody can be in there, and no fights can occur in the protein area, no matter what happens. In the middle, if there's more than one race, you don't have to have a hero in there. There's going to be a fight, and over here in the in the uh, little like factory area in the market. You can't fight up there, but if you do put a hero up there, it prevents anybody else from using the factory or using the market unless they put their hero up there as well. So the hero can establish dominance in that area. So, for example, if, like, this is going to be a fight right there, and if Blue put, like, their three guys in there, that's going to be a fight there. You know, and you're going to, before you can actually do your resolution by rolling your dice and collecting uh, the resources, you have to duke it out first. So, uh, once everybody has placed everything, then you can do movement. Right? And you have to place all your dice. So you, 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 each person goes until they use them all up. Remember, the only rule is is that you can't go back unless you have like something else. You, green couldn't come back, and I'm going to put two more guys in there. That's just not an option. They, you know, they'd have to go, okay, we're going to put them here or whatever. Because they can't place them in a plus spot where they've already placed dice. But... The next phase is movement, and you have to pay to move your move your people. Um, it costs one uh, Colton, one of these these, uh, these these orange guys here, one to move a normal unit, two to move a mercenary, and three to move your hero. But if you pay that, you can move them. And so, like, if you know, Blue decided he wanted one of these guys over here to help fight, he could pay one and move that in there. And that's a way that, like, as long as you have, and they, that's why this is a very good resource, is that you can kind of like, you know, have an ambush, if you will. Like, oh, you didn't think I was going to attack you? Okay, I'm going to pay a bunch, and I'm going to move my units over here, and I'm going to fight. And so that can be very devastating. So after everybody's done their movement, you're going to do a resolution. A resolution in a spot where there's nothing, nobody else you have to worry about, like we're over here with red, you have to just roll uh, to collect them. And to to you, you can't see it, it's probably upside down for you. But for every two successes, you get a plasma. For every two successes, you get a Colton. For every three successes, you get a crystal. And um, for every one, you get a protein. So so in this case, in this, you know, we'd roll these two red dice. We get a total of three, which is probably not a very good roll, obviously. But it's enough to get one plasma. So you go ahead and they get this plasma and they take that resource and put it on their player board. Now... In the case of a battle, you actually are going to compare the two results. And so, like here, if we have this situation here, and to make it more interesting, I'm going to say both of them had their hero in there, just so we can kind of you know make it more fun. So, uh, blue has the four dice and their hero. Let's see what happens. So, let's see. They have... It's kind of tough to see these dice, and I do apologize for that. But three, six, eight, nine total. Let's see if we get lucky, uh, with even though we have less dice for green here. And so we have, in this case, well, he did get a, he did get a, a, a one of these, uh, the, the charge tokens. So he's going to get one of those no matter what happens. But he got three, six, seven, eight. So he's one less. So he's going to lose the battle in this situation. But since he got, uh, he, as I said, he got nine to eight, he's not going to end up losing any units because one your heroes can't be killed they can be defeated and they have to leave but they can't be killed and two to actually kill uh, a normal unit you have to have at least two points higher but for every two points higher uh you do you do wound something now for the sake of an argument let's go ahead and change this hero die to a six so we have six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and we have the eight that we rolled over here now in the earlier example, what would happen is, is that 
you would just remove these these dice from the board, and then then uh, then blue would use their roll to extract whatever it is they're going to extract. In the case of one of these resources, or in the case of the ether, they would control the ether and they'd get uh, one of these resources, and then possibly get more if they have crystals that they can use uh, to turn those in. If we have this fight, what happens is is that um, since it's twelve versus eight, there's a difference of four. Two of these guys are going to be wounded, and if I don't have a plasma to enact their shielding, they're going to die. And if your units die, they go off to the side. Doesn't mean they're gone forever. You can clone or, or recreate them or get them through reinforcements, but they will not be readily available to me in the next turn. And then the same thing happens where, in this case, if it's an ether, they get the ether. If they were with their roll of twelve, they were say here at the crystals. Um, the crystals, you extract them uh, one for every three, so they have a 12 and they get four crystals in that area. So if you do dominate the ether area, you do get an ether die, which is an extra die that you get to use to defend the ether location until you lose dominance in that location. So you do that, you collect all of the different, uh, you, you resolve each area uh, by rolling the dice. Um, the only difference is that you'd have the market and we, we, you don't have to roll any dice to resolve the market or the factory. If you have your unit up here, you can use your die uh, to use the factory. For every four proteins you turn in, you can get another one of your dice that has not been used. They've been killed off or you because you only start with five. You have five more in reserve. You can add to, add to your board. You don't get to use them immediately, but you can use them the next turn. Or you can... Uh, purchase, you get two buy actions that you can uh, purchase through the market. And so, uh, and you can trade in anything. So like, um, you know, like proteins are worth two and crystals are worth four. So with four proteins, you could get one crystal, or two proteins, you can get one crystal and turn those in and trade. And then, since you have another buy, since crystals can buy extra cards, you could then, that crystal you just bought, you could use that crystal and then buy another card. And so after all that is done, after all the resolution, all the revision and everything, um, oh, I should mention one thing. If you do attack somebody's silo, you do compare the results just as before, and then whatever the, uh, you get to reduce whatever the person rolled uh, by what you rolled. So like if somebody got a 10 and then you, you defended with a four, they'd have six, and then they get use, they'd use six to take what they want from you as far as uh, the uh, from your from your player board and over here you can see it's like when we attack a silo um, it's you know two uh, for a protein three uh, for both plasma and colton four for a crystal and you can actually steal somebody's ether and that but that takes eight you have to have a lot more uh, the difference has to be very very large uh, for you to get the ether uh, so then you go to maintenance, and when maintenance goes, you have to spend protein to keep all of your uh, uh, units alive. If you can't spend a protein to keep each one, your hero doesn't need maintenance, just your normal units. If you can't spend the protein uh, to get you lose them, they die. Um, you can't use plasma to save them from that. And then you just go to the next turn. So then once again, you will turn an event card over, see, what, see what's going to affect you that particular turn, and then you go on through the process once again. Um, you know, the game moves very quickly. It's got a lot of action. It's got a lot of interaction, and it's got a lot, the, the variable player powers and all the different things going on. Uh, it's 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 one of those games that when I was told about it, I, I knew I was going to like it, um, both basically because it kind of hits uh, on all the different uh, buttons uh, that that makes a game interesting for me. But um, I'll talk about more of that uh, in my conclusion, which I will do right now. All right, cool. Uh, that is Ether Wars. I didn't mention how, how much I kind of dug the art. It was kind of, um, I mean, I realize this is a prototype, and what this looks like isn't not is not necessarily what the the end result of the game is going to be. Uh, but I, I kind of dig the like like these weird silhouettes here in the back of the board, you know, of the different races, and um, kind of like the darkness of space, but like the the little, little glimpse of energy there in the distance. I I, I dig uh, the, the way they're going uh, with the artwork for this game. So. I mentioned that uh, I, I was pretty sure I was going to like the game, and I ended up liking the game. And, you know, the reason is, as I said, it just kind of hits on all the things that I really like about 
uh, uh, these types of games with resources. Uh, it has, you know, kind of a Euroness to it, but it has conflict, it has dice, and it has combat and death and battle. And I, I enjoy that uh, type of game a great deal. Um, anytime, anytime I can play a game where my thing, my power, my race, has its own unique identity and kind of story. And that's one of the cool things about the game, too, is they actually have gone to the trouble of, like, telling the story of why the humans are here, where the what, why the Rippers are here, you know, where Vi came from, things like that. They, they, they've gone to that, that trouble of, like, kind of explaining, uh, like, the, the background, and also the backgrounds of all the mercenaries as well, why they're here, what they're doing. And it adds a lot to the richness of the world and a lot to the, the, uh, the the immersiveness of it and this is you know it, it, like i said it's kind of like a weird game where um you know it's you're collecting resources depending on the dice you roll which you know is straight out of stone age and i'm sure other games too this isn't like those aren't the only games that's ever been the, the case for um but uh you know but it also just has um you know you can't win this game without you know stepping on other people's necks as as you climb to the top and it, i really like the fact that um you know, if, if players are, you know, kind of getting close uh, to winning and they're getting close to, like, uh, um, grabbing uh, the, the, the last piece of ether to win, um, the other players can see that and they can go after them in a multitude of ways. It isn't just, like, fighting them, but, like, if you just harry them wherever they are, you know, make sure that they can't get crystal, you know, that they get that extra piece of ether. Make sure that, you know... They don't go uncontested. Have everybody in the center spot and have that big giant battle. And that's and I didn't I didn't mention that in the, in the the how to play. But when all when there's multiple people like in that that spot in either everybody rolls the dice and whoever rolls the best wins, and then inflicts losses on everybody else. So like if you have one person rolled 16, one person rolled 10, one person rolled 8, one person rolled 7, you deduct and so like the 10 would be 3 and the 8 would be 4 and so on and so forth like that. And then the one person establishes the dominance there. But if, as long, if there's more people there and there's more people using cards and different abilities and things like that, you can really make it difficult for the person that uh, is trying to win the game uh, to pull that off. And never mind the fact that if they're going to have a bunch of people in the middle trying to take over and grab that last piece of ether or, or that's a perfect time for you to send your hero and a bunch of your units to their silo and you know try to ransack their and just take some of their ether from them immediately from that and that's actually some of the more uh, one of the more epic wins that we had was literally we we had a game where which was won because somebody was able to attack and and steal uh, uh ether from somebody instead of going for the middle attack somebody and took ether from them and actually to get them the amount they needed to win the game which was kind of a cool way to win actually um you know, if you like games with area control, you like games with dice, you like uh, resource collection games, and you like a sci-fi theme, I think you're going to really, really, really like Ether Wars, and I definitely think you should check it out. So, there you go. If you have any questions about the game, I'd be happy to uh, hear them and answer them to the best of my ability. Um, as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, and until the next time, this is the Undead Viking, and I am telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. Alright, bye bye